all we can do. May we have a burden and a passion to do that for souls. Saving with fear. Realizing that hell is a real place where eternity is a really, really, really long time that never ends. And that when you die, your decision has been made. The responsibility falls upon us. May we get a burden and a passion for souls. There's an account told of two Moravian brothers. I should say brothers, but they were two Moravian young men. Years and years ago, and they heard about a slave master that owned an island. And he bragged and boasted that the gospel of Jesus Christ would never reach his shores. That it would never come there. So you know what they did? They sold themselves to that slave master in an effort to win souls. And they didn't gain a lot of money from selling themselves. But they did acquire enough money because they had to buy their own boat passage over to the island. And they went there knowing that they were going to die on the island. But they went there for one reason and one reason only, and that was to win souls. And as the boat was departing, those that knew them heard them cry, uh, cry, may the lamb which was slain receive the reward. And I know I have the language. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. They had a burden and a passion for souls. So much so that they knew that eternity was so long and hell was so real that they got a burden and a passion for those individuals on those islands. And it didn't matter what punishment should come their way, what they may have to endure, but they were going to go there and tell those individuals about Christ that they may enter into heaven one day and not enter into the gates of hell. Charlie Peace was an inmate there in England years and years ago. And the laws of man and the laws of God didn't bother him one bit. But upon, just prior to his execution, he was condemned to death. And on that morning, on a, in the Armley Jail in Leeds, England, he was taken out on the death block. Before him went the prison chaplain, and routinely and sleepily the chaplain read some ver Bible verses concerning hell. The criminal, Charlie Peace, who was never touched by any of the laws of man, they didn't bother him. His conscience was gone. It was seared. But yet those passages grieved his heart. And he was shocked at the way that the chaplain read those passages so casually and sleepily. You can almost envision the chaplain in a day's walk as he's going, almost like we would do our morning routine. But this criminal was so pierced by the way that this person, who was supposed to believe these passages wholeheartedly, just so casually read them. And it goes on to state that could a man be so unmoved under the very shadow of a scaffold as to lead a fellow human there and yet dry-eyed, yet read of a pit that has no bottom, into which the fellow must fall? Could this preacher believe the words that there is an eternal fire and, then con and never consume his victim, yet slide over the phrase without a tremor? Is a man human at all who can say with no tears, you will, be, you will be eternally dying and yet never know the relief unto the death that death brings. All this was too much for Charlie Peace. So he preached. Listen to this. The words of Charlie Peace go on. Uh, Peace go on. Sir, addressing the preacher, he said, If I believe what you and the church of God say that you believe, even if England were covered with broken glass from coast to coast, I would walk over it, if need be, with hands and knees, and think it worthwhile living just to save one soul from eternal hell like that. A criminal who 
wasn't bothered by anything in this life, wasn't bothered by the Bible for the remainder, for, our, for the previous part of his life, at the end of his life, was so grieved and so bothered that a minister could so casually talk about hell in such a manner. And he described that if this was true, I would go through agonizing lengths to reach just one person. Now, where are we when it comes to winning souls? Do we have a burden and a passion for souls? If not, we need to get one. Because it's one thing to realize that it's our responsibility, but if we're really going to be effective in winning souls, it must reach us to our inner core, inner core. And we've already talked about what the first step should be when it comes to reaching souls. Prayer. We need to find a burden and a passion for souls like never before. And we need to agonize them, agonize over them in prayer. And guess where we develop our burden and our passion for souls? It is in a place of prayer. Now if we do not have a burden, if we do not have a passion for souls, then we honestly need to find ourselves a place at the altar. We need to find ourselves a place in the prayer closet and say, God, take away the desires of my heart and give me the desires of your heart. And it's not one of those things that we need to find our place, self, a place at the altar because of we're sitting or something like that. But we need to find ourselves a place on the altar because we need to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ even more. Because that is the heartbeat of God. Souls. And we need to have a burden for them. Because it comes down to, if we don't reach them, who will? And the truth of the matter is, you're going to reach people that I may never reach. And I'm going to reach people that you're never going to be able to reach. But may we have a burden and a passion for souls that we can grab and snatch up as many as possible. The Bible talks about the crown of life and how we'll get a soul's winner's crown when we enter into heaven. May we strive to win souls, not necessarily to build that crown, but because it is the desire of God's heart and we are being transformed in the image of Jesus Christ. We said it earlier today, Christianity is not about becoming a better you, it's about being transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The psalmist David wrote, create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. What is that? Individuals we want to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add? <clears throat> if not, let us bow our heads in prayer and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, even right now we rebuke every attack of the enemy that, that may come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as he so desires, making himself visible if he so chooses. Lord, right now we pray that you anoint the song leader and the musicians, for give them a special blessing as they praise you upon the strength instruments and vocal cords. Anoint, give them a special blessing as they lead us in the songs you have us to sing. I pray, Lord, that you anoint the pastor's mind and his lips, Lord, that your words would flow forth, and that you give him a special blessing as well. I anoint our minds and our hearts that they would be plowed, that they would be good soil for your word to follow them, Lord, that we may remember it throughout the week, Lord, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives, that they would take root in our heart, and that we would be transformed into your very image even more, Lord, that your word would be hidden within our, within our hearts. I pray that we would have a greater desire to see you like never before, Lord, and a greater desire for souls like never before, Lord. For we need to see you move in this last hour, Lord. Send a revival like this world has never seen. 
And let it begin right here at this church. And let it begin with each one of us. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus.